All right, guys, <clears throat> this is Mr. Rosen here. Today I'm going to be teaching you a few things. I'm going to show you another kind of tween, okay? And then what I'm going to show you is called a shape tween. So what I did was I just created a new uh, document here or a new animation. And I'm going to turn a circle into a square. So let's go ahead and let's make a circle. Make it down here. You can do whatever color you want. I'm going to use green. And then on frame 30, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to create a blank keyframe. Now, I do want it to be blank. If I create a normal keyframe, what happens is it essentially copies and pastes the circle from one frame to another. So I have it in both. Both of them have the same circle. That's not what I want. What I want, let's get rid of that there, is I actually want a blank keyframe. So blank keyframe, if you look, it's got an open circle right now, which means there's nothing on it. It means that that cell is blank right now, or that frame is blank. So let's go ahead now and let's put in a rectangle. Put it a different color even. Maybe we'll do like a blue color and put it up there. So the idea here is I want to go from this to this. And that is not as simple as just a movement, right? If you're doing just a regular movement, use what's called a classic tween or even a motion tween. This one, though, it's actually going to morph. It's going to like change sizes. And it, we want it to sort of slowly transition from this circle into this rectangle. So to do that, all you have to do is right click and create shape tween. And hopefully this will work. You can sort of see it's already working, actually. And there you go, it looks pretty good, simple stuff. Okay, so hit enter, and you can see what it does. So that's, that's gonna do like a, like a morph. Okay, so that's called a shape tween. Now, sometimes with shape tweens, you gotta be careful. Um, you may have to break apart your images. So let me just show you on another layer here. I'll just draw something. Sometimes what'll happen is, let's say I draw this, this shape here, okay? If you look at the shape right now, it's actually, it's, it may not be pick it up very good in the video, but it's got tons of little dots on it, okay? The little dots means it is broken. So it means like I can take a little chunk off like that. It means it's broken, okay? Sometimes you get things like text or you put an image in there and it's not broken. You don't see the little dots everywhere. If that happens, you have to break it apart. And to do it... Um, if you go under modify right now, I'll group it, so I'll just show you what I mean. So right now, this has got a box around it. I do not see the little dots, okay? In order to do a shape to an angle, I would need to break this thing. So to break it, you can go to modify and break apart, right? Or con it's control B. And then you'll get the dots back, and then you won't have any problems. So these two shapes, they were already broken when I did them. So it wasn't really an issue. So let's get rid of that layer. But I just want to show you that if, if your shape tween is not working, that's what I would check. Make sure that your, your uh, pictures on both ends of the animation are both broken for this to work. Okay. Now, let me show you something else. Okay. There is a tool in Adobe Animate called Onion Skinning. Onion Skinning. And what Onion Skinning will do is it'll show you all the little frames along the way. So let me show you what I mean by that. So onion skinning, where the heck is it here? I always forget where the heck it is. Um, there it is, my bad. I always forget, it's right here, it says onion skin. If you click that, you can sort of see where uh, or where, like what is gonna happen with your animation. It's a really useful tool. So you can sort of see, okay, well, I, I, maybe you want to trace a path. You want to see exactly where this ball is going to bounce or something, right? That's what onion skinning will allow you to do. Onion skinning, if you toggle it on, it shows you transparently all the little frames along in the animation. And it's really good for seeing the path that your object is going to take. Okay, so that's just one tool you can use versus going one at a time like this. Like I said, you can just turn it on and you can see, okay, it's going to go like this, right? So it's, it's just a, like I said, it's a visualization tool for seeing all the little frames along your animation. So that's a pretty cool thing to do. Now, this is my little animation here, okay? 
And so it's starting off as a circle and going into a rectangle. If I test it, you know, that's exactly what it's going to do. Now, what if I wanted to change this up a bit? And I want it so that I go from the circle to the rectangle and then back to the circle again. Okay, how would I do that? So what I could do is I can try and add in another keyframe over here and try and draw in another circle and hopefully it's in the exact same position and do my best to, to get it lined up exactly, right? But there's another way of doing it. What you can do with Adobe Anime is you can actually copy frames. So if I highlight these frames right here, I'm gonna highlight them and I'm gonna right click, click copy frames. And then what I'm gonna do is the next empty frame, I'm gonna right click in here. I'm gonna say paste frames. And what I've done now is I've copied that animation. So it's gonna occur twice, okay? Doesn't really help me that much yet, but we've got two identical things happening here. What I can do with this stuff though, is I can highlight all this and I can right click it. And I can do this thing here that says reverse frames. So do it in reverse order. And now watch what'll happen. It's gonna go all the way up there. And then it's gonna go in the other direction back to the exact same spot because I copied and pasted it. So it should go exactly perfect. Reversing frames is really, really good. Imagine you were trying to make a stick figure that was running, right? You maybe you take a few frames and you you know, you have the character lift their leg up as they're running and then maybe you got to reverse it back to the original position, right? You don't have to redo it. You could just copy the frames and reverse them. Okay, so it's really, really cool for things like that. So it's super handy in some situations. So if I test it now, let's see what it looks like. Should bounce back and forth forever. Yeah, because I reversed that, that uh, sequence of events. So instead of going to the square, and now it goes to the square back to the circle. Okay, so that was a cool one I wanted to show you. So I showed you shape tweens, onion skinning, reversing frames. Uh, I just want to show you one last thing, okay? And this doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while you get a broken tween. Now, I haven't showed you this before, but let me just show you. So I'm going to just uh, turn this layer off here. Let's make a new one and do something very simple. Like, let's do maybe my name here. Okay. Mr. Roson, and I've showed this before, and it's gonna do a real quick classic tween. So I'm gonna insert a keyframe over here, and just move my name down there, and then insert a classic tween. Ooh, it needed to be a symbol. That's fine, I'll just let it be a symbol. Okay, so it looks like that. Right now, I know this tween worked, because well, A, I just tested it, and the other reason I know it is because on the bottom, I've got an arrow that's going across. The arrow tells me, yes, I'm going to get from frame A to frame B. I figured that thing out, okay? Sometimes, you know, in the process of editing and things like that, things can happen. You can break your tweens by accident. Let me show you, for example. If I were to delete this frame right here, okay? If I delete that frame, looks fine at the beginning, then you see a bunch of dots, okay, and then nothing at the end. So if I actually try and run it, nothing happens, and then it just goes invisible at the end, okay? The dots right there, what that means is you have a broken tween. So you normally have to go from a shape tween or a, a keyframe to another keyframe, okay? That is how you do your classic tweens, for example. If something gets messed up, then it's going to break the, the, the tween. So let's try and undo this. Other things can happen besides just deleting the frames as well. Let me just uh, undo remove. Okay, so now we're back to normal, right? It doesn't even have to be just that. I think you can mess it up even if you just draw, like if you draw something on here, that might even screw it up too. Let's see, does that work? No, oh no, it's kind of acting up still. It's still got the dots there, so it's saying something's broken. Okay, so the dots are happening. So we do have a broken tween here. So 
you you want to be very very careful when you do this kind of stuff. Um, me adding in that circle on that keyframe means that the two keyframes are now different, and it's not sure how to actually do the tween properly. So I think it's let's remove it off. Make sure put it back to normal here. Yeah, these two are the same. We're good to go. Okay. So again, like I said, for the simple stuff I'm doing right now, it's not going to happen. But if you start getting into really, really complex animations, you got lots of layers happening. If you have a broken tween, you'll know it's broken by having dots instead of a solid line. Okay. So just a little tip to, to show you. So again, just to recap the video, we talked about shape tweens, what they are and how they work. Okay. We talked about copying and reversing frames, onion skinning, which is right here. It's your onion skinning. So that shows you all the little frames in between, right? And we talked about broken frames. So hopefully you learned a little bit and uh, keep experimenting with Adobe Animate.